welcome back to learn skn and today we have an economics video for you and this one we're looking at section four market structure and market failure so this one we are going to look at the market structure first and then in a subsequent video we look at market failure we are also going to try and break it down into the different market structures so first i'm going to give you one video with deal with the generalization of all the market structures and then some other videos will deal with each market structure as it relates to the graphs that represent each market structure and also the profit maximizing position of each market structure etc etc but for this video we're just going to look at an overview of the major market structures out there and we're also going to look at the definition of the term market structure all right so we're going to use mostly the textbook for this one the csec economics textbook for this one and for some of the later ones we look at the slides to see the various graphs that are attached to each market structure so let's just jump right into it so the first thing we're looking at here is specific objective number one define the term market structure and so we go right to the textbook and we are going to see the term market structure a market structure is defined as the features that determine the behavior and performance of firms in the industry so in the economy there are many different types of firms each producing different products economists prefer to classify firms and industries according to the type of market in which they operate such classifications are called market structures the spectrum or range of market structure is seen in this figure right here all right so we have the spectrum of the market structures in the economy you have the monopoly the oligopoly the mon monopolistic competition and you have perfect competition so what is a market structure again a market structure is defined as the features that determine the behavior and performance of firms in a given industry and these examples are monopoly oligopoly monopolistic competition perfect competition and you also have what you call a duopoly all right so that's basically it for the definition it's a very simple straightforward definition behavior and performance of firms in variety of situations so that's that right there then we're going to describe the main types of market structures and the main ones are perfect competition monopoly oligopoly and monopolistic competition and we're going to outline the characteristics of the main types of market structures in terms of behavior and performance of the industry under these headings number of buyers and sellers types of goods freedom of entry and exit control over price barriers to entry and exit in the long run and then later on we'll come back and look at the graph that illust graphs that illustrate the main market structures so describe the main market structures my internal market structures so the first one up would be what we call perfect competition this is one of the first market structures perfect competition perfect competition is a market structure in which there are many sellers and many buyers producing a homogenous product let's go over that again perfect competition is a market structure in which there are many buyers and many sellers producing a homogeneous product a homogeneous product some people call it homogeneous some people say homogeneous but it simply means as the this part says homo means the same so this is a market structure where many buyers and many sellers so many sellers produce the same type of good the same type of product and one of the best example of this market structure would be the market structure for for farming farming produce you know like milk potatoes rice fruits vegetables in general because you cannot dif really differentiate you cannot tell the difference between milk produced on farm a from milk produced on farm b you don't know all milk tend to look like tend to be the same all milk is milk so they put them in a truck the truck collect them and they bottle them and sell them all milk is milk you go down to the market yes they have different varieties of potatoes but all potatoes for the most part sweet potatoes 
all sweet potatoes tend to be sweet potatoes all rice all wheat all of them tend to be basically the same might be different variety but you cannot really differentiate which farm produced which rice and where did this rice come from if you hold two cups of rice in your hands you can be you can't really tell where they came from because the product is homogeneous homogeneous same product so it's a market system where there are many buyers many sellers and they're producing a homogeneous uh, homogeneous product so we have seen this out there you go to the supermarket there are tunnels of farmers in each country and they and everybody wants to eat vegetables so there are tunnels of dairy farmers out there tunnels of vegetable farmers tomato farmers whatever you have it but there are also a lot of buyers for these products so that's basically it for perfect competition as it relates to the definition so let's look let's look at what they say here in the economy there are four main market structures in figure 2.1 at one extreme there is the monopoly where there is no competition as the firm is the is it is the industry at the other extreme there is perfect competition where there is a total competition where there is total competition in the market in between these two extremes there is the oligopoly where there is some competition among firms and the monopolistic competition where there is even more competition than in the oligopoly as we move from left to right on the spectrum of the markets the level of competition amongst the firms increases as we move from right to left of the spectrum of the markets the level of competition amongst the firms decreases monopoly oligopoly monopolistic competition are considered to be imperfect competition so all of them are considered imperfect competition we have whereas this market here is perfect competition where you have many buyers many sellers producing the same or similar product the homogeneous product and so there are some characteristics or features to perfect competition that we're going to look at in perfect competition there are many sellers in the industry and there are many buyers by homogeneous we mean that each unit of the product is identical like i said all rice are rice all milk is milk all potato is potato therefore buyers will buy from any seller there is perfect knowledge this is one of the features right here perfect knowledge in the market so they ask you to list some characteristics of the perfect competition here we have many buyers many sellers product is homogeneous and there are there's perfect market in perfect knowledge in the market what does this mean this means that all buyers and sellers are aware of the product its features its price and other buyers and and the other buyers and sellers so they're saying here perfect knowledge so if you you know what rice is for you know how it is produced you know who's selling it you go to the market on a sunday or saturday you trade it by potatoes you know what potatoes are you know what they are for you know the prices because you know the going rate for a pound of potato because everybody has it so that's perfect knowledge the buyers and the sellers have about the same amount of knowledge about the product so they call it perfect knowledge the buyers and the sellers have just about the same knowledge about the product so that's why you call it perfect knowledge again this means that all buyers and sellers are aware of the product its features its price and other buyers and sellers there is one price prevailing in the market whatever quantity of the product the firm produced in the market will be sold at the prevailing price or the market price so there's one market price no firm can next feature no firm can influence the price okay no one firm can influence the price as firms output is only a small part of the total output in the industry the firm is therefore said to be a price taker so let's look at it again imagine you are a farmer and everybody producing potatoes People selling their potatoes for five dollars a pound where would you now go and sell yours for six dollars a pound nobody can buy it from you so it doesn't make sense so now you have to go and be a price taker and take the market price that it is right now at five dollars if you go lower you're not going to influence anything you're just going to lose money so it makes sense to just sell at market price because you go lower you're going to lose money because everybody is selling at market price and you're too small a member of the market to influence any price at all so therefore you are price taker all right you are too small to influence the market and so you are price taker that's the next feature so we have homogeneous product many buyers many sellers perfect knowledge and you are a price taker
the individual firm has no market power, none whatsoever. There is, now, our next feature is there is freedom of entry and exit, meaning a new firm can enter the industry and start producing at any time, and exit an exiting firm is free to leave the industry. So there's freedom of entry and exit. Nobody gonna stop you from going planting some potatoes and then selling them. Nobody gonna stop you from doing that. And if the price ain't right, nobody gonna stop you from leaving the farming industry also. So that's why they said yeah, there's freedom of entry and exit. You can go and start the business in that industry. What you want, nobody gonna stop you. When you want to exit, nobody gonna stop you either. So those are the features of perfect competition in a nutshell. All those perfect competition. That's, the, that's the, the, the extreme, one of the extremes. Now, the other extreme is the monopoly, right? The monopoly. What is a monopoly? A monopoly is a market in which there is only one seller and there are many buyers. So, just one seller and many buyers. Or you can also say a market in which there, there, there is one seller that has the overwhelming market share. All right, so one cell has the overwhelming market share, so his model will be a monopoly. So let's go. Now we can see why perfect competition has its name. There is competition amongst the firms in the market, and this competition is perfect or complete. Note that perfect competition is a theoretical concept. You should note this. It's a theoretical concept, and in the real world, there are no perfect markets. It is not possible to find a market where all features exist. Gas stations and stock exchange are perhaps two of the best real-world examples of firms that fall under the perfectly competitive structure. All right, so again, back to Monopoly now. So here's the diagram of a Monopoly. One seller, a lot, a lot of buyers. The firm, the one firm is the industry. They are the only producer of that commodity, that good or service. That's a Monopoly. Mono, one, Monopoly. All right? Features of the Monopoly now. They are figure 12.3 illustrates a monopoly with one seller and many buyers. In a monopoly, the firm is the industry, as I said before. There is no competition as the firm has no other firm which will which is which, which to compete. So there's no competition because you're the only firm. Now here we go. There are many buyers of the product. The product itself is unique. So that's the next thing. Unlike the perfect competition where you have the same product, all of them are the same, in the monopoly, you have a unique product. You're the only producer, you have a unique product, and has no close substitutes. All right, there's no close substitutes. There is imperfect knowledge in this market. What does this mean? This means that buyers and sellers are not aware of all the information in the market. So buyers and sellers do not share the same information. In most cases, the producer has more information than the buyers about the product and the pricing and everything like that. So again, this means that the buyers and sellers are not aware of all the information in the market. The monopolist can only sell more at a lower price and if price increases, less will be sold. The firm produces a given quantity and sells it at the, at the, price, at the price the market is willing to pay. Or the firm might choose a particular price and sell whatever it can at that price and so therefore this monopoly is what you call a price maker the monopoly is a price maker they can determine their own price of their product it's a price maker the perfect competition is a price taker the monopoly is a price maker the house of Angus Stewart Bitters and Carib Brewery Limited are examples of monopolies in Trinidad. Carib Brewery in St. Kitts is also a monopoly producer of beer in the island. So those are examples of monopolies. The state-owned water and electricity companies in the Caribbean islands are also monopolies. In this case, government ones. So, you know, most utilities are monopolies in the Caribbean. Most islands, you have just one one person producing water one for electricity and those kind of things now not internet and phone you have more of a duopoly in the caribbean with lime and digital that's a duopoly which is which in two but a monopoly you have electricity water and they gave examples here the cariburi in st Kitts and in trinidad they are the only ones who produce beer in those regions N barriers to entry exit 
barriers to entry exist that prevent firms from entering the industry. So unlike the perfect competition where there are no barriers to entry, in the monopoly, there are barriers to entry. There is thus no free entry into the industry. Barriers to entry enable the firms to remain monopolists, as no new firms can enter and compete with the monopolists. All right. So what are some of these barriers to entry? A barrier to entry is anything that prevents new firms from entering and competing in an industry. Again, a barrier to entry is anything that prevents a new firm from entering and competing in an industry. And some of these barriers to entry are government regulations, patents, large capital outlay, ownership by the firm of a scarce factor of production. So government regulations. There are laws that prevent new firms from entering an industry. For example, in the Caribbean economies, there is only one firm providing water due to government regulations. So there's an example right there. The government can straight up, straight up say, look, I only want one firm in the country producing this particular good, water, electricity. Back in the day, there was only one telecommunication firm in small islands. That was cable and wireless. But then they, they allowed um, digital to come through. But even so, even in small islands like St. Kitts, there's only one firm that produces, that provides uh, home phones. You know, Lime still provide a, a landline. No other firm provide a landline. So the government can say, okay, I don't want any competition in this industry. One and one only. And so that's why government regulations can create barriers to entry. Then you have patents. A patent... A patent grants the inventor exclusive rights to the patented product or process. So again, if you have one way of doing something, you have a patent, nobody else can legally use that patent to produce a good. You're the only one with that patent. You're the only one that can produce something in a certain way. But normally it's for a, a certain period of time before the patent runs out. But for the time being, that's going to be a monopoly because you are the only one who can produce certain things in a certain manner you have a patent for that and so only you can produce that good in a certain manner legally or, or else you're breaking the patent and they can sue you and shut you down so a patent grants the inventor so if you invent something you have the right to produce that thing all you want because you invented it you ain't have to answer to anybody you are the sole ownership of that product or that process so that's a monopoly right there then you have a large capital outlay that prevents smaller firms from entering the industry for example oil refining the good example oil refining because it is so expensive to set up an oil rig go and drill for oil and those things so there's no way the average joe the average business can just come and start an oil refining company because there's so much money you have to spend it's too much most of these oil companies have been in it for years. BP and those things, Exxon Mobil and them, for years, way back when, when they had the oil barons and stuff in America. So they have been a part of it for years. So it'd be hard for any new company to just pop up and start oil refining because a lot of money. There are other examples of that. In certain islands, it would be hard for an exchange to just come in and start certain, certain producing certain products. You know, back in the day, imagine you starting a cell phone company. You have to install infrastructure. You have to install antenna. You have to do all kind of crazy stuff that you don't have the money for. Same thing with, with electricity. To start an electric company, you have to install all those lines, install the posts, install so many things, and it's expensive. Another barrier to entry for the monopoly is ownership by the firm of scarce factor of production. For example, Angstrom Business Limited is the only firm that processes possesses the knowledge of the secret ingredient in Angostura Bitter's recipe. This is a factor, capital, or uh, know-how. So, secret recipes and stuff would give you a monopoly on that particular good or service. So, that's monopoly in a nutshell. And like I said, later on, we're going to look at profit maximizing for monopoly and those kind of things. The next one on the agenda is monopolistic competition. And I bet by the name, you can tell what this is this entails now monopolistic so you have some features of the monopoly and some features of the perfect competition but let's see what it's about definition monopolistic competition is a market structure in which there is competition amongst many firms so there is competition amongst many firms 
all right but the thing is firms can differentiate their product they can make their product different to the other me, uh, the other competitors so let's read on a market structure of monopoly competition has features of both perfect competition and monopoly in fact even the name of this market structure is a combination of monopoly and perfect competition in this market structure there are many buyers and many sellers just like the perfect competition there are many buyers and many sellers for example shoes you have nike reebok adidas puma sketches uh k swiss timberland clarks i mean all those are shoe companies but they so they, that's many sellers but they are able to differentiate themselves by marketing branding different aspects to their shoes basketball shoes dress shoes you know the the ear pockets whatever so they're able to differentiate themselves so in fact so there are many buyers and many sellers just as in perfect competition the product is similar yet differentiated through branding as i just rattled off a whole bunch of branding right there this is a pro this is product differentiation this means that the product is made to look different in the eyes of the consumer. This can be achieved through packaging or even slight differences in product features and of course giving product a brand name. The products are still clothes substitutes. So again, shoes industry, best a good example, clothing industry in general, apparel industry in general, car industry, phone industry, all these things are close but you're gonna market you're gonna differentiate your product you're gonna brand the product differently give it different features to try to make it different from the others so these are features of the monopolistic competition many buyers many sellers but similar yet differentiated products product differentiation gives the individual firm some degree of market power for example only one firm produces grace jerk seasoning there is no substitute for great for grace jerk seasoning even though other firms produce jerk seasoning this is especially true for loyal customers so what it's saying is that just like the monopolist you can actually be a price maker you can actually state your own price for your product because nike can charge x amount of dollars for their you know their tns or their their, their um Air Force or the Harachis or Air Max 95, whatever. They can charge a different price for sneakers than Fila or than Adidas and Reebok who merge or than Puma because they can say, look, my product is special and so you have nostalgia behind it when you have the Jordan ones. I mean, when you have the Jordan retros and stuff like that, you can charge exorbitant prices for those things because even though they are sneakers, you there's, there's there's branding behind it there's heritage behind it there's history behind it so you can make your own price so you can be a price maker just like a monopolist all right so in monopolist competition there is imperfect knowledge in the market this means that buyers and sellers do not have all the information on the product and its features its price and other buyers and sellers as with the monopolist more can only be sold at a lower price and less sold if the price increases the firm is therefore a price maker as i just rattled off a price maker kind of jump the gun there a bit but monopolistic competition is a price maker it can choose a given quantity to produce and sell at the at the price that the market is willing to pay alternatively it can choose price and sell whatever quality it can at that price so again, it's a price maker, just like the monopolist. The, there might be some barriers to entry in this market, though they are not difficult to break through. While pure monopoly and perfect competition are rare, monopolistic competition is common in the region and throughout the world. Some examples are restaurants, hair and beauty salons, and supermarkets. Monopolistic competition is therefore a combination of monopoly, market, and perfect competition so what's some of these buyers to entry the same way we said before such as if you're trying to burst onto the scene of course it's going to be expensive you have to cost a lot of money to attempt to differentiate your product so marketing is going to be expensive for you imagine launching a brand new pair a new um brand of shoes 
You have to now go and market, 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 market to get your name out there and try to compare your name to others in that same market. So that could be a barrier to entry because you now have to go and spend a lot of money on marketing. All right, so then we have the oligopoly now. The oligopoly. What is an oligopoly? An oligopoly is a market structure in which there are few firms competing in the market. Few sellers and many buyers. Few sellers and many buyers. That's the oligopoly right there. Example of oligopoly is there in the region includes commercial banks, beer brewing, petrol refining, and production of household detergents and personal care. In an oligopoly, there are few sellers and many buyers. The products might be homogeneous, unleaded petrol, as we say homogeneous mean the same, or differentiated like detergent you have your breeze you have your roma you have whatever you tied you have all kind of different detergents out there ajax ajax whatever you have them out there there is per there is imperfect knowledge again in the market as firms and buyers might not know all the sellers buyers price and products available firms tend to avoid price competition and so prices remain rigid or there is price stickiness all right, so there's price meaning, meaning that because both they're like a few sellers, nobody really wants to rock the boat. Nobody really want to price war, you right? You don't really want to price war. So you keep your prices very close, very similar because the time you drop your price, the other problem drop the price. If the price war going on, and only the best company gonna survive. So we don't really want that. So we keep the price kind of, you know, price rigidity means that the price means at a certain level over a long period of time. Nobody really want to rock the boat to the price here right now. All right, if firms increase prices, competitors will not follow, and so the, the given firm will lose customers to the rivals. You see that? Market share and revenue will also decline. If the firm lowers the price, its competition will also follow, and so the firm will not gain any additional customers, market share, or revenue. In fact, revenue will fall, cutting off price will lead to price wars, benefiting no firms, only the customers. So that's why the oligopoly is so sticky. Definition of the offer price war. A price war occurs when rival firms continuously reduce prices to undercut each other. Oligopolies might choose to enter into arguments with or collude with one with each other to maximize profit. And so, you know, one of the biggest examples of collusion is the cartel. You have OPEC out there. When everybody says, okay, we're going to sell oil for this price. Nobody wants to, are we going to output X amount of barrels of oil? Nobody wants to wrap the boat. Nobody wants to charge less for the oil charge more produce more or whatever so collusion occurs when there are price and quantity agreements with other firms so like i said one of the best example is the oil producing nations of opec where they collude also a lot of the airline industry tend to have some collusion going on everybody want to charge about the same price for the tickets you know so there's a collusion right there again all right uh no no let's look at all of them in a well before we continue the cartel like just like opec cartel a group of sellers colluding in this way is called a cartel in many countries cartels are illegal okay drug cartels all those things in you know, the drug cartel where all the bosses come together and they, 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 they divvy up the the, the the area and stuff like that and say we're selling the coke for this price and that price illegal so we have the illegal there are high barriers to entry in this market usually due to high setup costs Imagine again the oil industry, only a few can operate in the oil industry. A private individual cannot simply take a loan from a bank and set up a bank or an oil refinery company as he does not have the knowledge or large capital outlet. The oligopoly is also a typical market structure in which, in the real world, unlike perfect competition and monopoly. And so that's the oligopoly. So that's the major ones the perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and the oligopoly. Now here we see all of them in one table and we can look at them on the different headings. For example, number of sellers, monopoly, one, oligopoly, few, monopolistic, many, perfect competition, many. Number of buyers, all of them have many, 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 many. So monopoly, many buyers, oligopoly, many buyers, monopolistic competition, many buyers, perfect competition, many buyers. Product, monopoly, a unique product. Oligopoly, homogeneous but differentiated. Monopolistic competition, differentiated. Perfect competition, a homogeneous product, meaning the same product. Knowledge of market. 
Monopoly imperfect. Oligopoly imperfect. Monopolistic imperfect. Perfect competition perfect. Price monopolies are price makers. Oligopolies are price makers with price rigidity. So they come together and decide the price, like the cartel and the collusion. Monopolistic competition is price makers, and perfect competition is price takers. Uh, entry conditions monopoly no free entry. Oligopoly high barriers to entry. Monopolistic competition low barriers to entry, but they exist nonetheless. And perfect competition, freedom of entry. All right. So that's the overview of the major market structures: the monopoly, oligopoly, monopolistic competition, perfect competition. All right. So I think we'll study here for now. So the next video we're going to look at, we're going to try and go more in depth. So we would have described the main types, but each type they have certain unique features about them that can be expressed graphically. And so we're going to delve into each, looking at the graphs that represent each, each of those systems, those structures. So we know that we have an overview of what they are by itself. We can now dig into them maybe one at a time or two at a time in per video. And we can discuss the graphs, long run, short run, etc. All right. So the only way to continue this is to stay tuned. So you have to like, subscribe, and you have to hit the notification bell so you know when, an S when Learn SKN would have dropped a next video for the market structures all right so that's it for now thanks for watching thanks for listening